Tonight, security updates for your car. Google Now, now knows everything. And the easiest way to teach your robot how to cook. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 265 for Friday, January 30th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Squarespace.com. Creating and editing your website is easier than ever with Squarespace 7. It's so easy that Jeff Bridges created his website, dreamingwithjeff.com. Try Squarespace now. Visit Squarespace.com and enter offer code TECHNIGHT at checkout to get 10% off. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to the tech feed. AOL laid off 150 people today. Most of them worked in ad sales and have essentially been replaced by software. A Wall Street Journal source says the cuts are a direct result of AOL's programmatic advertising technology. AOL is also folding its gaming blog, Joystick, and the unofficial Apple weblog into their tech news site and gadget. AOL Autos is being combined with the Autoblog site. Some blog staffers are also being laid off. Yesterday, Google announced fourth quarter revenue and profits that were well below Wall Street forecasts, causing the stock to drop over 4% in after-hours trading. Apple's big iPhone news didn't help the company, nor did reports that Microsoft was investing in an Android firmware startup called Cyanogen. Why is Google scared of Cyanogen, you might ask? According to the Wall Street Journal, the company aims to build a less restrictive version of the Android mobile operating system. So, are Microsoft and Cyanogen teaming up to try to bring Google down? Maybe. Do you have all the latest security updates for your computer? How about for your laptop? How about for your smartphone? How about for your tablet? Your phablet? Great. Now, how about for your car? Today, Slash Gear reports that BMW just patched a security flaw in their connected drive infotainment system. The flaw, if exploited, would have allowed car thieves to access the mobile data connection and unlock the car using a cell phone in just a matter of minutes. According to a BMW press release, drivers will automatically get the security update that patches the flaw as soon as the vehicle connects to the BMW group server or when the driver calls up the service configuration manually. And in light of the security hole, BMW says they are now using HTTPS encryption. Today, Google is reporting that their popular Google Now service will now connect to third-party apps. Roberto Baldwin, reporter at The Next Web and self-proclaimed self Google Now fanatic, is here to talk to us about this. Fanatic? I just made that up. <laughs> Myself proclaimed you a Google Now fanatic, but you do use it. Yes, um, I, you know, I, 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 I uh, typically use an iPhone. I also have an Android phone, you know, Windows phone. I even have a BlackBerry, uh, but I still use Google Now via the Google app. Uh, Google Now is sort of the killer app for Android, though, right now because it's system wide. Uh, you know, it could tell you when your flights are coming in. It could tell you about packages. It could tell you about traffic on the way home. Of course, you have to feed all this personal information into Google, which, you know, you've probably been doing for years anyway, with or without your knowledge, um, for it to work. And now uh, third-party integration with that is it's, – it's, if you're a fan of Google now and, you, and you're not too concerned about your, uh, your, your data – which, you know, if, you, if you're a fan of Google now, you're probably not too concerned, uh, then it, it's actually pretty cool. Well, I, I read that, that no personal, no user data is going to be sent to them, like no personalized user data. Is that true? Yeah, no, no data will go from, uh, from Google now to, let's say, to, to a third-party app. So the, there's the eBay app that works with it. So you're not going to, the eBay app will not get information from Google about you. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love Google Now. I just switched from a Samsung um, Android phone to an iPhone, and that is the one thing that I really miss. And and I can get the Google app on my iPhone, but now um, all this integration, will I be able to get that on my iPhone with the Google app? Probably not. It's unlikely that Apple is going to allow that, allow that sort of integration between apps. Um, you know, the, the Google might be able to figure out a workaround uh, where if you're using the service and then the service, instead of uh, having it work it through through, through the phone itself, it'll work through the services itself. But I, it's, it seems unlikely. I mean, Google now is sort of that thing that, that'll get people to switch over to Android. Um, do you think it will, will get people to switch over to Android? Um, I, you know, 
it's 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 odd, you know, switchers. People switch for different reasons. Uh, some people just want something new. Some people are, you know, maybe they're tired of the iPhone. Maybe they're tired of Android. Uh, and some people, you know, they'll see a feature that they're like, well, I really like this feature and I'm going to switch. I mean, I don't know what the numbers are or percentages, but, uh, you know, I know people who have switched from iPhone to, to the Android operating system who kind of because they love Google now. Right. Well, you know, we talked a little, I was talking earlier about the new uh, Cyanogen Microsoft uh, investment uh, which it, they're they're trying to create a phone that is less restrictive, an Android phone. Uh, do you think that that will have any? I mean, do you think that they'll you'll be able to use Google Now on a phone like that? How do you, how do you think that will play into this? You know, that's it's it's an interesting you know take because you know Google you know they started Android or or, or they released Android with a sort of it's open. Well, it, it was more open than Apple, and then as the years have progressed, this became you know, less and less open. It's less of this sort of like uh, utopia open source operating system and more and more like what Apple has. But, you know, there are the ability, to, you know, for apps to talk to each other uh, that Apple, you know, until recently with, you know, extensions and stuff like that didn't really have. Um, you know, they might block, you know, stuff like that for uh, Cyanogen, you know, especially with Microsoft, who is, you know, has its own oper mobile operating system. It's not doing as well. Uh, is investing in it. Right. I mean, I think that the problem people have, phone makers have, is that they will restrict your use of YouTube if you don't make Google the default search engine. And I mean, it's interesting. I don't know a lot of people who care if Google is the default search engine, but it does seem just the idea of it, them calling themselves open source does seems a little bit phony when you get right down to it. Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, they kind of stopped that like uh, years ago. And, you know, when, when you have to worry about carriers locking things down because they have, a, you know, a deal with Google, we kind of go back to the pre-iPhone days. When the iPhone came out, it was, the craziness was, is it didn't have bloatware. Uh, it wasn't, you know, uh, Apple stipulated that you couldn't block anything on the device with, at the time, Singular, which then turned into AT&T by the time it was released. And that was huge. I mean, there were phones on the market before that that had Bluetooth, but the you know the carrier said no, I don't, we don't want Bluetooth turned on on this phone. So the manufacturer would just disable it. Right. So back to Google now. What what's your favorite thing that it does right now for you? How is it most helpful for you? I've been traveling a lot, so for you know for I, I, I kind of forget about you know when is my flight. If you have one flight a month, then it's fine. But when you have multiple flights because of CES and the Microsoft event and so on and so forth and traveling for the holidays, uh, you, you you sort of lose track of you know when your flight's taken off. So for that, it's been it's been great. Yeah, right? and it doesn't like, just work for your own flights, right? I mean, I was notified over Christmas that my parents' flight was going to be delayed. It just it just grabs that stuff out of your email, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, my wife took a, you know, she went on a trip and when she was coming back, I was able to say, oh, this is her plane is coming in at this time. And uh, fortunately, nothing was delayed, but I've seen it where it, you know, it pops up and tells me, oh, this flight is delayed, you know, X amount of hours. So it's, you know, it's, it's super helpful because it just sort of knows things that you need to know uh, automatically because it's sort of, you know, it learns about your, your, uh, your, uh, Behaviors. It was great when I worked out of the when I worked when I didn't work from home because it would tell me what sort of commute I had. Right. Uh, do you ever find it creepy how much it knows about you? I, I think you should kind of find it creepy. I don't find it creepy just because my it's my job to know how much you know Google is is you know how much information Google's mining about me. Right. Uh, I think you know the average person should kind of find it creepy because you, suddenly you're like oh it knows that I'm going on a flight. It, it, Oh, it knows where I work and where, you know, you, you're feeding all this information into it. You're feeding your home address, you're feeding it your work address, you're feeding it your, your flights, you're feeding it, you know, incoming shipments. And that, that, that you know, that, that should raise a little bit of some piracy, or not piracy, uh, privacy flags. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think Tim Cook said that, you know, what if you didn't want to even have to ask the question? What if your phone just knew before you even asked the question? Which could be nice or um, invasive, depending on how you looked at it, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's a slippery slope, you know, that, that fine line between, oh, this is really awesome, to, oh, my God, this is kind of creepy. <laughs> right. And so <laughs> the new uh, third-party uh, apps that it will connect to, what are you most excited about it knowing about you now? You know, it's funny because I saw Strava tweeted about something, and I don't even ride a bike, but for some reason I thought that was cool. It was like you could kind of keep track of, of what you're uh, you're doing on your bike. Um, the 
uh, Expedia. Mm. You know, things where I've looked up flights because I'll, you know, routinely look up a flight and then they'll tell me, oh, by the way, the flight you're looking up, it's cheaper now, right. which is nice. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Roberto. What are you working on next? Uh, it's the weekend. I'm working on napping. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, Roberto Baldwin is a reporter at The Next Web, and you can see what he's doing besides napping at Strange Ways. That's Strange Ways with no vowels. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. <laughs> Coming up, Google will pay you to find bugs in advance, and Snapchat has a new disappearing web series. But first... This episode is brought to you by Squarespace.com. It's even easier to create your own professional website or online portfolio. So easy that Jeff Bridges created his website, DreamingWithJeff.com. Now you've seen Jeff Bridges, of course, as the dude in The Big Lebowski, and Kevin from Tron. Squarespace and Jeff also teamed up to create a Super Bowl ad featuring the Jeff Bridges sleeping tapes, his album of relaxing sounds and stories designed to put you to sleep. You can check it out at squarespace.com. And if you want a great site like Jeff, you have to check out the completely redesigned Squarespace 7. There are 14 new designs giving you over 30 to choose from. Making changes is easier with live editing on one screen, so there's no more toggling to the preview mode. You, pick from, you can also pick from thousands of professional Getty images and use them on your site for just $10 each. It's incredibly easy to use. And if you want some help, Squarespace has live chat and email support 24-7. It's inexpensive. It starts at just $8 a month, and Squarespace takes care of the hosting, so you don't have to. Plus, you get a free domain name if you sign up for a year. Start a free two-week trial with no credit card required, and start building your website right now. When you sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use offer code TECHNIGHT to get 10% off. We thank Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. Squarespace, start here, go anywhere. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Google revealed that since 2010, they've paid security researchers over $4 million to uncover security holes in Google-owned web properties. Now the company says they'll add Google-developed apps and extensions to the Google Vulnerability Award Program. They also announced a new program to issue vulnerability research grants to give qualified hackers money up front to support their bug-finding research. And for those Robinhood hackers out there, Google says they understand that some of you are not interested in money. To that end, they offer the option to donate your grant to an established charity. And if you do so, they will double your donation, subject to Google's discretion. The government of China has rolled out an even greater great firewall. The new nationwide internet filter further separates Chinese internet users from the rest of the world by making it harder to use virtual private networks to get around websites that have been blocked by the government. The new VPN blocking system is more automated and dynamic, according to the Wall Street Journal. So even if a new VPN system emerges, the software will probably block it automatically. The change creates big problems for global firms with offices in China. They had previously used VPNs for basic everyday internet use, like sending email. It also puts Chinese researchers, engineers, and other professionals at a great disadvantage, as they may no longer be able to follow the work of their colleagues abroad. And as of this recording, twit.tv is still available, and you can check it out on this site, greatfirewallofchina.org. We heard two juicy bits of streaming media news today. The first comes from Netflix, who announced that comedian Aziz Ansari will release his new stand-up show exclusively on Netflix starting on March 6th. Okay, exclusive Netflix deal. I get it. But this second story, I'm still having some trouble wrapping my non-millennial mind around. It's a series called Literally Can't Even. It stars famous daughters Sasha Spielberg and Emily Goldwyn. And it's going to be released on Snapchat's new ad-supported Discover service, which launched last week. Literally Can't Even premieres tomorrow, January 31st, and then it immediately disappears like your Snapchat, fo Snapchat photos. Actually, not immediately. Snapchat says the episode will stick around for 24 hours. Then a new episode will premiere every Saturday. I am really interested in seeing how this turns out for them because that's kind of how TV used to work. And I like it better the way it is, sticking around. Let me watch it whenever I want to. And finally, have you ever wanted to program your robot to cook meals for you, but you don't have time to learn advanced robotics? Well, now you don't have to. As it turns out, now robots can learn things the way the rest of us do, through YouTube videos. Researchers at the University of Maryland have figured out a way to test 
wrote for test robots to learn how to cook from a series of cooking videos on YouTube. It should be noted that the funding for this project came from DARPA, the same folks responsible for the giant humanoid, humanoid robot that we showed you a few weeks ago. And he can learn to cook. I want one. That's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And if you like that show, subscribe to that too. And tell your friends. And tell your friends to tell their friends. And tell your friends to tell their friends to tell their friends. Tell their friends. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.